Hi guys, uh, Nate here. I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to know what you're printing with, how to identify your filament. Um, so labels may have fallen off or, or things might not spool properly. <laughs> um, so if you're ever curious what you're printing with, what you can do is just light it on fire. Now, if it burns blue, that means it's PLA. Now, keep in mind that this stuff will drip, and it will drip liquid fire, basically. So, um, but if you notice, that was blue. It's, um, hopefully it's in camera. Make sure I got it on camera. Okay, so that's blue fire with a touch of yellow. Um, so I know that this is PLA. Um, next thing, uh, so this is PLA, it doesn't matter what color it is, I think I'm pretty positive all PLA, oh, molten plastic, um, all PLA should burn blue. Okay, so that was also blue, ow, hot. Um, all right, let's switch over to ABS. Um, I've got this labeled. I'm getting ready to do a demo on ABS here in a second, but um, let's go ahead and burn it. ABS burns yellow and it gives off black smoke. That is ABS. That smoke is toxic. So um, it's one thing to quickly test it, but you don't want to like inhale the fumes of ABS, correct? Um, nylon. Nylon, this is a 618, it's pretty flexible, but it's also super slick and it's super durable. I mean, nylon is some of the toughest material that you can get. Um, I've never lit nylon on fire. This will be an experience. It sounded like it was crackling and sizzling. Uh, it kind of looks like PLA. Burns really slow. Um, whew. Yeah, that, that's toxic fumes. Um, also, uh, this stuff um, is pretty expensive. So if you have nylon, um, whew, man, that does smell strong. If you have nylon, you'll probably be aware that it's nylon because this stuff is not cheap. I think this is 45 bucks for like half of a kilo. Um, all right, moving on. Ninja Flex. <laughs> this is probably not a... I got cats that are being crazy they're twitter pated um so this is ninja flex it's very flexible stuff perhaps it would help if you could see what i'm doing um you could tie it in a knot you can tie it in a bow it's uh it's really tough as well you can you might be able yeah you can break it um that probably took like over 80 pounds closer to 100 to break um well, anyways, it's it's super awesome stuff. It's a little bit on the expensive side. So let's find out. Well, I don't know. That's closer to ABS. Um, I'm making this video so that you guys don't have to light stuff on fire. I'm not recommending that you do this. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I got it too short. Okay. So let's say you have a filament that you just don't know what it is um, because the label's missing and you bought too much. So I have something kind of like that. Um, I actually do know what this is. I'll go ahead and light it on fire and <laughs> light it on fire just to be sure. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think it is? Yep, PLA. So. Very quick way to test PLA lower temperature melting point. Um, it's made out of corn, sugar, different um, biodegradable stuff, um, which then would imply it doesn't hold up outdoors for very long. It'll hold up great if you uh, keep it inside in good weather and all that. But if you let it hit sunlight for like you know all day long every day and water rains on it, it's not going to last. Um, just a, another example, Oops, lost that one, um, another example of something, PLA, um, yeah, dripping, fire, not good, so not on the carpet, 
Uh, PETG. You know, I haven't actually tried PETG to see what it does. So, and this video has already started, so I'm not going to wait. I'm just going to cut off a piece. Um, if you have a full spool, it's a good idea to make sure you don't let it unravel. If it unravels, it can tangle and then it can, uh, it can like jump track and then it can bind when it's supposed to be smoothly unrolling. So let's test P, I'm sorry, PLA, PETG. We just printed Benchy with this. Let's uh, see what it does. Um, that looks closer to ABS. And I would I would kind of expect that. Whew, that is not good stuff. Don't breathe it in. Um, yeah, so that that kind of looked like ABS to me. Um, it's it, PETG is supposed to be somewhere in the middle between the two, I think. Uh, between PLA and ABS, They're kind of different properties of each. It's not a really common material, and it's generally a little bit more expensive. But that is a material overview. So ABS is petroleum based, um, holds up outdoors. It requires a higher temperature. It's non-renewable. Um, PLA on the other hand, it's corn or sugar based and um, it is renewable. Um, if you're wanting to go green and you want to do stuff that's a little friendlier for the environment, I guess. This uh, PLA is kind of generally an easier, nicer thing to use. But then again, I mean, ABS, um, even though it's not renewable, um, they'll be developing, they are and already have developed uh, filament extruders for the home hobbyist. Um, they're not, so you can take your old prints, grind them up, put them in, it heats up a nozzle, an auger squeezes it through melt it and you collect it coming out and it literally extrudes it at a thickness 1.75 or 3 millimeters whatever you choose and then you got to cool it and then you spool it onto a you know a, a spool and then boom you can reuse your old ABS and I believe that works for PLA too um, I think there's certain things that thermally thermodynamic changes occur with PLA where ABS, it, it, I don't think it does, so there's certain things that you have to um, ensure with PLA if you're trying to extrude it. I, I could be wrong on that, but um, it should work. A nylon, I think, is the same way. Um, maybe closer to PLA, it might take some special characteristics of extruding it to make it reusable. I have no idea about NinjaFlex. It's, it's a whole other ball of wax. Um, I also have, just throwing this out there, uh, I have something called Protopasta, or that's the company that makes it. This stuff is pretty cool. Um, you should try to keep your filament in like a filament safe with desiccant, uh, with some desiccant gel in there. Um, that kind of ensures its longevity, especially if it's like PLA. ABS, I don't think you have to worry about desiccant. Because PLA likes to absorb moisture. Um, this is stainless steel. I haven't done a whole lot of printing with it, but it's supposed to be really awesome stuff. Um, now this is PLA, but it's got like fibers in it, and it's super brittle. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but look at that. It, I mean, it doesn't even, it can't take much of a bend. Where PLA, I mean, it bends. It's not as brittle. Um, PLA, you can, if you give it any rotation, it just snaps right off. As soon as it, ex if I can get it to rotate, as soon as it experiences some, some uh, torsion, it's good and gone. ABS is way tougher. This stuff, oh well, it was supposed to be tougher. <laughs> This stuff definitely can take more stress before it snaps. Um, generally, I think if you're making stronger components, ABS is the way to go. If you are, but keep in mind, when you print ABS, it gives off toxic fumes. So you really need to figure out a way to vent those fumes when you're printing 
which means build an enclosure or you know all the other possibilities out there print out in your garage don't don't be printing next to the nursery for 10 hours a day that's that's going to cause some health issues for for the baby um let's see Well, that's basically it. I think I went through a majority of what the average person needs to know or cares to know. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys, and uh, more videos to come.